Hi everyone. Hey, thanks for tuning into my unboxing video. Well, let's get started and see what we have. Oh, we have capacitors with dielectrics inside. So what I have here is a picture of a capacitor. Uh, the blue material inserted in between is a dielectric. And what dielectrics are, are nothing more than insulating material. And so what happens is inside the insulator, uh, the materials act as dipoles, meaning the molecules themselves form uh, positives and negatives. So as an example, let's say I took a look at a water molecule here. So the water molecule, the oxygen is going to snag the electrons from the proton, um, the hydrogen. So this is going to end up with net negative and net positive. So the water molecule itself will be net positives on one side, net negative on the other. And in fact, this is why surface tension exists. So it's why raindrops form up as like droplets and you can fill a glass with water. And so how that pertains uh, to capacitance is if I were to have a capacitor, and let's say I have a capacitor with no dielectric in it, what will happen is inside here, whoops, Inside here, there is some net electric field, right? That let's say it looks like this. Well, when I sandwich the dielectric inside the capacitor, the dipoles are going to align such that they are opposite the field. Again, being the, the opposites want to attract. So internally, if I have this charged up here, then what will happen is when I, the molecules inside of the dielectric will align opposite. So what will happen is I have my original and my original electric field like this, but each one of these dipoles are going to introduce a new electric field opposite the original. And so what will happen is I'm going to end up with some net electric field, which is the sum of these two things. So I'm going to have my original electric field. And I'm going to add to that the field in the opposite direction. So what I will get, let's call this, I'm going to get some new net electric field. What this does is when I think about capacitance as charge over voltage, my original amount of capacitance Q over V, which that V is my original electric field times the distance of separation. By adding the dielectric, what I now do is change this to my net electric field, which will give me some new capacitance. But because this electric field is decreased in the denominator, I will get an increase in my capacitance. So rather than working this out every time, what we do is we introduce something called the dielectric constant. The dielectric constant is symbolized by a kappa. I know that doesn't look very good, but let's be honest, even if I had my dry erase board, it wouldn't look very good. Um, so. Yeah, look up what a kappa looks like because it's a little bit different than that. Um, so this is the dielectric constant. You can thank Michael Faraday for the weird name. What we do is when we figure out a new capacitance, we simply say, okay, we take this dielectric constant times our original amount of capacitance and we get a 
new value for capacitance. Uh, as a source of reference vacuum, as a dielectric of one. Air has a dielectric of slightly larger than one. Um, water, since we were talking about the water molecule, will have a dielectric that's around like 80. I guess in truth, that number is dependent on temperature. It varies based on uh, how cold or hot the material, the, the water is, the hotter it gets, the uh, lower the dielectric constant is. So I want to look at... Um, two different scenarios. The first one is where I'm going to take a battery, a fixed voltage source, and leave it connected to both capacitors. So in this scenario, I have the same voltage. What you will find is that the capacitor with the dielectric in it will be able to store significantly more charge on it. And again, when I think about capacitance as Q over V, what happens is by fixing the V and upping the amount of capacitance, I'm able to store more charge on the capacitor. And again, this is due because of the decreased electric field over here. Here I'd have my electric field. Here I'm going to have my E1. So being that the field is diminished in here, there's less things fighting these here so I can pack more charge on them easier. The other thing I want to do is let's say I begin by charging the capacitors. So in both these scenarios, I'm going to have a fixed amount of Q. Now, if I were to take a voltmeter, and hook these to both, what will happen is on these, uh, I'm going to have a decreased amount of voltage. Because again, if capacitance is Q over V, when I up the capacitance for a fixed amount of charge, what will have to happen as a consequence is the voltage will have to drop. So if I look at this as V1 and V2, what's going to happen is V1 is going to be greater than V2, and that will be a function of uh, the capacitance or the dielectric of the material that we put in. All right, so I hope this hasn't been too awful for the first one. I promise you I will try and get better at these. Um, I will be posting assignments up on Google Classroom and through Wiley. Uh, I would suggest that if you do not have notifications turned on in Wiley that you do so. Um, I'll be shooting out an email uh, in the next few days to kind of uh, work on a schedule. Uh, I'll keep that fluid. I will also keep you apprised if I hear things from the college board um, and the University of Pittsburgh about how we go forward moving with credit. Um, stay safe, maintain your social distancing, and I will talk with you later.